Howdy. Well, we're doing something a little bit different for this episode. Um, Jen and I rolled in late. We're at one of our favorite rivers uh, to, to explore and fish and camp and hike and do all the, that fun stuff. But um, we got in pretty late last night. We, we tried to leave town to beat some of the crowd and uh, uh, we didn't. <laughs> uh, so we ended up getting, you know, not, not the greatest campsite. So we're actually probably gonna move and we're gonna move over to a different drainage that fishes pretty well. Uh, and it has better camping options. So, um, but the thing that I wanted to do different for this episode was uh, in the last, uh, last video that I put out, uh, I showed about how I broke the tip off of my favorite three-way. Um, and this is perfect three-way water. And uh, so while that's a bummer, um, you know, life goes on and uh, you pivot, right? So uh, I was digging around in the garage and I found this old, fiberglass rod uh, that was in a box, you know, just some old fishing rod box of, that I, that I uh, had out in the garage. And I had bought this maybe 20 years ago as, as a dec decoration kind of thing. And uh, I don't know that I've ever fished it. So I decided it'd be kind of fun to fish it. So it's something called a Pacific Special. Um, like I say, old fiberglass rod maybe 50s or 60s would be my guess. Um, certainly not an expert on any of that, but uh, it's, it's seen some love, you know. Um, the, the cork is, uh, it spins up here at the top. One of the sections spins, it's pretty chewed up. And one of the guides uh, is currently taped on. Um, but, you know, I figure if it's, this is any fun to fish and, uh, and it looks like it has some promise, then maybe, maybe I'll go through the effort of rewrapping the guide and, re-gluing the cork, but um, I don't know anything about the rod. I don't know anything about this maker. I tried to look it up, but couldn't find anything, but measured it. It's about seven foot, nine inches. Um, you know, it's hard to tell with fiberglass rods, especially these old ones. Uh, when I cast it in the backyard, it, it it felt, you know, it had some some nice give, like, you know, that 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 kind of noodly feeling that fiberglass rods can have, so. Um, I don't know. I'm just looking forward to trying something else. And I figured, you know, with, with so much technology that goes into rods these days, why not see what the old rods can do? And uh, yeah, we'll see if we can catch any fish. And uh, if it does, right on. If it doesn't, I have a backup just in case. So uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm always amazed at some of the items I find left behind in the forest. Fireworks, even if they are in a fire ring, should never be something you light off in nature. That seems like common sense to me, but clearly it is not. Mostly I just find bread clips though. With a lot of the good campsites already filled on this river, we hung out for a bit before making quick work of packing up the truck and camper and heading out to another river in the area. Having the ability to quickly relocate 
is a nice option to have and gives us a ton of flexibility. Sometimes it's nice to set up for a few days, but sometimes the spirit of adventure kicks in and you find yourself traveling to the next spot. Gotta hydrate. Well, this is our uh, this is our anniversary weekend, so uh, we we try to always go. Well, we'll try. We have made it a goal to go backpacking on our anniversary weekend, uh, and it you know doesn't always happen. But we were gonna go on this trip, and uh, <laughs> my foot was bugging me, and so we decided that it wouldn't be a good idea to get out there if if I had a bum foot. So. Uh, we didn't, and in the end, my foot ended up feeling better, and now here we are on this trip. Oh well, we're still having a really good time. So uh, that rod, that rod is really interesting. It, uh, you know, it's fiberglass, and any of the modern fiberglass that I've cast, it, it has a similar feel where it just, it's kind of noodly. But I don't know if you kind of embrace the noodle. Um, I think, I think it's actually really fun. Uh, you, you feel things a little bit differently than you do through some of the more modern graphite rods, you know. It's, it's heavier too, you know, that's a, that's a big difference, but, but uh, it's a lot of fun as well, so. Um, but yeah, so that's been fun, but now it's getting hot, so I'm gonna let the fish have a, have a chill time, and uh, for lack of a better term, but um, there's a trail just, just right outside of camp here that we're gonna go do some exploring on, um, maybe tomorrow, um, but yeah. We're just kind of unsure what we're doing and uh, kind of go from there. So we'll see how it goes. Now that we had settled into a new camp spot, it was time to turn our attention to dinner. Jen had planned a nice meal and made us some tacos that were a true culinary handshake, and with all the activity of the day, were devoured pretty quickly. morning. We've had a great morning. Uh, beautiful night of sleep. Uh, you know, always a luxury sleeping in that camper and just the, uh, the wide noise of the river helped keep us asleep. And, uh, 
it was a great evening. Uh, wonderful meal. Um, just all around good. So we've been having a, a good morning. We just, uh, taking it slow. And that's something we've been talking about a lot recently. It's just that, just that notion of like kind of slowing down a little bit in, in the morning in particular and, and just on purpose, you know, to, to, you know, we live in a, in crazy times. We live in a busy world, all these things. And, and, uh, you know, we're out in the middle of nowhere and, uh, we don't have any connectivity, you know, any, anything like that. Uh, so, so it's nice for us to just have a, have a minute to, uh, you know, sit down by the river and read and, uh, you know, enjoy your coffee or your tea in the morning and, or your water or whatever you're enjoying. But, uh, just kind of, kind of set yourself up, maybe mentally prepare, uh, for the day ahead. And so, uh, we're trying to implement that, not just in our camping life and, and, outdoor life, but really, you know, in the mornings at home and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, so that's what we did this morning. We're, uh, we're enjoying, it was, uh, the Marine layer moved in, which is really nice. So cooled off a little bit during the evening. Uh, so it's been a nice cool morning and I have a feeling it's going to be pretty warm today. So we're going to try to get out and do, do some hiking up the trail here and, uh, obviously do some fishing as well. Um, to see where we see where we end up. Um, we're a little undecided whether we're going to stay here tonight or, or move on. Um, but I don't know, at this point, there's not really a reason to leave, but we're both, you know, we both love the adventure a little bit. So exploring is kind of a fun thing. And that's, you know, it's something I enjoy, you know, I, I will get hit up sometimes for camp spot recommendations or fishing spot recommendations and all that, like what river are you at? You know, all that kind of stuff. And I don't know. I, I come from the world of, of d d go find it, you know, and, and I understand, you know, so part of that in the modern world is to, to find it on the internet or, or, you know, that kind of stuff. But I, you know, not to sound like an old timer cause certainly not, but, uh, but I also grew up in a time when, you know, the way I learned to fly fish was from books, you know, um, or, Maybe you would go out with a guide, but you know, I've never really been financially in a place where that was a, a regular activity. So, uh, but you know, it was the same with, with camping and, and, and just finding areas to go explore. It was just, you know, you would look at maps and, you know, uh, say, okay, that looks, that looks interesting. Get in the area and then just go explore. So I still have that deeply ingrained within my, my soul and, uh, and just, you know, what I like to do as far as outdoor exploration. So, um, so we might end up doing that, but we might not, I don't know. And that's also a good thing. I, I love, I love, uh, remaining spontaneous. So, um, but we're still having a great time and, uh, wouldn't trade this for the world. So the camping trip will continue and, uh, we're going to continue to enjoy it.
This day of fishing was pretty special to me. I often find myself seeking new water to explore, and on a river like this, it feels like a new adventure is around every bend. The fact that I was catching a fair amount of fish definitely kept me moving upstream in search of the next hole or run. To say I was in my happy place would be putting it mildly. What a day we've had. Uh, that hike was pretty cool. Uh, some really good fishing along in there. And, and it, it's, it just makes me want to explore this even more. I mean, there are so many, so many stretches of that that just the trail isn't ne necessarily near the water. And so it's just a matter of just kind of getting out there and doing some exploring. But, uh, but that's for a future date. And, and, you know, I didn't want to spend this entire trip uh, fishing as, as much as I do want to do that. Uh, it's our anniversary, so I'd like to spend some time with Jen, but, but we're also both enjoying just having some time to chat and read and just, you know, kind of, kind of get, get some forest bathing going on. So, um, in the end, I don't know what to think of that rod. <laughs> um, there are times when I cast in it and I, and I thoroughly enjoy it. And there are times when I'm casting it when I'm going, what is this? What, like, what? But at the same time, I, I also have to kind of go back to my own uh, head and kind of check myself because, you know, rod technology has changed so much over the years. And, and uh, you know, nowadays we can have, we can have a specific rod for a specific type of fishing, which is luxurious and great. Um, sometimes completely unnecessary, sometimes totally necessary. So uh, at the end of the day, I kind of wanted to see what, what it would be like to have a rod that uh, wasn't made, you know, anytime recently, and just put it in the hands of somebody that, you know, is a halfway decent fisherman. And wh what happens? And uh, it casts and uh, that's the most important part. <laughs> the rest of it is up to me, right? So, uh, so I don't know. It, it was it was something I was thinking about while I was casting it. That that maybe maybe the takeaway here is that if you're someone who's just getting into the sport, and someone who, you know, maybe you've been handed your grandfather's old rod, maybe, you know, maybe your budget isn't high enough that you're you're able to go out and buy, you know, the latest greatest. I think the point is, is that just get out and do it. Just, just take what you have and go do it. Um, I come from a long history, long, long enough history of woodworking. I've been doing woodworking for years. Um, still do it every once in a while. I have a shop at the house and everything. But it's one of those things where, you know, you have a tool and the tool will do the job and that's good, but a good tool will help a good craftsperson do the job a little bit better and a little bit easier. That's kind of my philosophy. Um, also, you know, it's, it won't break, you know, all, all these things. And, and there are a lot of reasons to go spend money on a fly rod, but uh, I think there are a lot of reasons why we could also, you know, take a step back and think about like using the tool that you have and what that all means. So, um, that being said, you know, I don't know. I, there, there's a lot of ways you can break this down because I was also thinking about, you know, is it better to learn on a rod like that? You know, that's, that there's a bit of a learning curve to it. That's good. 
And so that, you know, if you learned on that and then saved up your money and then bought a better rod, will you appreciate the, that better rod even more? Or vice versa, if you have this really good rod and it teaches you, you know, you're gonna easily cast it a little bit better and everything. So that if you were to get to the point where say, you maybe broke the tip off of your favorite three weight uh, and you just needed a rod to fish, um, you know, having, having some junker rod just sitting around, does it get the job done? And um, the answer to that was very much so. And uh, I think that's pretty cool. So, uh, I don't want to blabber on too much, but um, the mosquitoes are trying to eat me alive, which is uh, a fun fun thing about camping in the summer. But um, we're gonna enjoy our anniversary, get a get a quick dinner here going, and uh, then uh, then I don't know we're packing up and leaving out, or ugh, we're packing up and leaving tomorrow. So um, that'll be fun. Uh, at the end of the day, go fish what you have, enjoy it. Life short fish as much as possible. Maybe it's just me, but sometimes I feel like I can't get enough exploration in on a given trip. Call it wanderlust, call it a curious mind, call it being adventurous. Whatever it is, I have tried really hard to design my life to be able to do this type of thing for as long and as much as possible. There is sacrifice involved, but it's all worth it, because I feel that when I'm at an age where this becomes harder to do, I won't feel like I've missed out on much, and that's worth its weight in gold. And who knows? Maybe I'll still be fishing this old fiberglass rod at that point. We'll see you again next time. Thanks for coming along for the journey. Cheers. <laughs>